Hello and welcome to the No Expense Spared Cloudfest 6 Cribs Tour of my studio. This is David Hasselhoof, that's Jean-Paul Gautier, and I'm Traxler. You're joining me from a top secret location located somewhere in Middle Earth. Let's do this. <laughs> welcome to my padded cell. This is where the magic happens. It's small, it's humble, and it's making me feel a bit... <coughs> Bear with me. Now, the most important thing with any home studio is lights. We have laser lights, camera studio lights, and we also have UV lights. The UV light is my favorite. So when it comes to the studio itself, it is made of a timber frame construction on the walls. Uh, lined with soundproof plasterboard which I have then plastered over. You can see I've not quite made a very good job of the ceiling and um, that light's a bit dangerous. Most of the walls you can see have got the soundproofing foam on them and some of the walls I've decorated with uh, tiger print fabric. Although it looks big on camera it is quite small in comparison but that's handy for me because I can sort of reach out and touch most of the equipment while I'm playing live. Also, one great tip I've learned from building my own studio is to have the, all the power cables from the equipment going down, but the audio cables, you can see here from the mixer, it goes across in a loom, and a lot of the audio cables are sort of wedged in to in between the soundproofing. That way you're not running parallel with any of the electricity cables and you get the subsequent uh, electromagnetic interference and you get that buzz. Uh, which you don't want. So another thing that's great with this studio is we have a full rated fire door just to keep any of the sound uh, inside so I don't piss off my wife or the neighbours. So this is essentially the studio space that I work in. A lot of people say you can't swing your cat in here but I beg to differ. Should we prove them wrong, Kitchell? Uh, so going through my setup very quickly, this is the Roland W30 which is basically a sequencer and sampler on a keyboard take floppy disks, we can do things like uh, this, or this. So I can roll in bits of my live performance like that. Uh, and then going across this midsection, we have the 01, the 08, the 03, and the 09. You, I guess you all know what these do. Uh, let's fire up a little example. So I've got many, many patterns programmed on all of these and they're all kind of interchangeable between songs except for the acid lines mainly because they're quite um, bespoke to each track. And then at the top uh, I have my beloved JDXI which I can just uh, really put tracks together on. Uh, bring tracks in and out, uh, play some leads etc etc uh, let me just stop that so yeah i've got two digital synths there an analog synth and a drum machine so this is really useful for putting quick ideas to together so if we head over to this side of the room i have this cool motherfucker here uh, i also have a drum brew impact which has got some nice analog sounds on and a, uh, a decent step sequencer uh the Chaos Pad 3, which mainly use, mainly used just for sweeps uh, and stuff like that. And then uh, the Micro Freak. Uh, which is good. Got a decent little sequencer on it and some good filters. And also um, like a programming matrix where you can do LFO envelope uh, uh, assignments and stuff like that. Uh, two Rocket uh, Monitors. Uh, not the most expensive monitors in the world, but they do me for what I need. And then below that, we've got the uh, RM uh, Yamaha RMX-1 sequencer, which is pretty ancient now, but it is the brains of the operation when I've had enough of trying to uh, manually sync in uh, tempos and loops and stuff. Uh, just give you a quick example. If I set that onto a, a preset pattern on there and then uh, go to section, we can... So 
some tracks I kind of play live, live, and then other tracks I still play live. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I get the help from the sequencer um, because you, you know you can't do everything yourself, and that's the way it should be. Time to pull correctly with MIDI. Uh, moving along, then we've got a Mackie 16 Pro uh, FX uh, mixer which connects to uh, the laptop via USB, so that's pretty cool. Uh, get decent sound quality from it and I can be pretty hands-on mixing things in and out uh, during live performances. Uh, moving on from that, we've got a Korg ES1. So I've got a mic. Uh, um, and then that's it for this side of the room. There's only one piece of equipment left to show you. A Korg Prophecy, which you get quite nice distorted uh, uh, old school kind of sounds on there this was actually owned by the uh, the guy from the mighty boosh and the sneaker pimps and then when it comes to setting out a live performance i have um, a crib sheet so you can see there i've got the tracks and then what uh, presets the uh, equipment needs to be on or what pattern selections uh, stuff like that um, i practice 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 um, but, you know, when it comes to the live event and uh, you start bricking it, it's always good to have a little backup on paper. So important piece of equipment in the studio. It's got lots of notes on patterns and, and, and ideas and stuff. So I always recommend keep a notepad, jot down ideas. Uh, so in terms of hardware, that's pretty much it. I don't really have gear acquisition syndrome uh, because, to be honest, I just don't have the money. Um, but what I do have is uh, uh, FL Studio 20 as a door, uh, only because most of you might know I had an, uh, my debut album come out in February. Not a plug at all, but go and check it out. Uh, and I use the door to record um, any of the tracks in and, you know, ma uh, mix and master them. So, for example, uh, we have this. <laughs> that's just some of the sounds off the hardware and then when it's all mixed into FL Studio this is the destroyed track which will be the opener at Clownfest 6 it sounds very similar it sounds like this once it's been mixed out so obviously that's had a couple of effects put on the uh, 303 and obviously the vocal samples but you can see how I like to have my hardware transition over to my studio stuff uh, and I usually write on hardware and then get it down onto the door so it can be released uh, or if I'm out and about working away stopping in hotels I'll take the laptop with me but when I write stuff on the laptop it is with the hardware in mind what's created on the laptop with the hardware in mind transfers over easily to the hardware so basically uh, the first my debut album is literally a um, studio recording of the live performances that you'll see at Clownfest and uh, other festivals so thank you for coming along on this tour with me. I've tried to keep it short and sweet. That's why I'm talking so fast. Uh, a little bit about myself. I started writing music in my 20s. I'm now 40 something or other, not quite 45 yet. Uh, I'm married with a, uh, a daughter that's in uh, secondary school. Um, main influences are Chemical Brothers, Fatboy Slim, The Prodigy. Uh, I grew up, grew up uh, in the 90s with um, grunge, indie, a bit of punk, uh, that kind of thing, Blink-182, um, Rage Against the Machine, Apollo 440, etc, etc. But I've got many wide musical tastes. Uh, all I'll say to people when you're writing music is just have fun. Make sure your music's got, music has got a lot of energy, a lot of emotion, because that's what it's all about. To me, music is just pure, raw emotion personified through the ears. If you ever meet me, I'm the kind of guy that I'll sit down and have a cup of tea with you and watch the world go by. I'm as polite as you can imagine, but once I get in the studio and once that music starts, I just become an animal. Don't worry, I don't bite, but you'll see when you join me at Clownfest 6 on the 22nd of August at about 20 to 11, you'll see that animal come out. See you there, enjoy, and thank you to Mark Gardner for bringing so many talented artists together and for saving my sanity during lockdown. It's been so much fun, you're amazing, and you deserve a medal. Love to you all.